Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pick up right where the last video left off. So what we're going to be working on today is making the circuitry from the back of the LCD as thin as possible so that uh, uh, the lid of our laptop, the monitor portion, can be as thin as possible and therefore emulate uh, a real laptop as best we can. If you want to build yours differently, uh, mainly if you have enough space in your lid that you've allocated for these circuit boards to be a little bit thicker, you can uh, leave these components on. You can kind of ignore what I'm going to do here to make things easier on yourself. But what you're watching now is you're going to see me do all the necessary modifications to make these boards as thin as possible so that it can be as close to a real laptop as possible. So there's a couple other things I need to mention. Uh, one being that after the first video, I had some requests for kind of a shopping list, like what you're going to need for the entire project. So what uh, I did was compile a list of what you'll need for both the electronics and to build the way we build our case, what you'll need to do that. And you can find those uh, lists at www.thextop.com. The Xtop, all one word, no spaces, hyphens, or anything like that. And then you can click on the DIY tab, do it yourself. And then you'll find links to all these videos and you'll find those lists that I was just talking about, so hopefully those can get you better prepared for the videos that are coming up. So essentially what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be removing the VGA and the DVI ports because those are really thick and they're too big to fit in the back of my case. So unfortunately, to save time in these videos, I'm not going to be teaching you how to solder. Uh, if you've never done it before, you should definitely look around YouTube, find some other videos on it. Uh, there's some good ones out there. That's where we learned how to solder. So uh, make sure to take a look at those before you just start going haywire because it's really important that you don't ruin anything while you're, uh, you know, trying to do this. Because every time you screw up, there's, you know, 100, 150, or if it's on the Xbox, 300 bucks down the drain. So you want to be careful with this stuff. It's really delicate. So what I'm doing right now is just adding a little bit of fresh solder to each of the joints that I'm trying to remove. And then I'm going to take this solder sucker, as it was, and heat up each solder joint uh, one at a time and try to suck the solder out of that joint to loosen the pin inside. This is the way you want to do things if you're either A, want to be just super cautious, or B, you need uh, whatever component it is that you're removing from the circuit board. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the VGA port. Um, our personal preference is uh, to not do, not remove things this way, uh, basically because we have plenty of VGA ports. We're never going to need one of these again. They're like $50 at Radio Shack. So later in the video, you'll see that I essentially flip it over and carefully take a pair of um, wire clippers and really carefully, um, this you have to do it gently, but you can cut through the VGA port and actually get to the exposed pins and then that makes it a lot easier to pull stuff out. So here you've seen that uh, this is the result of all my first round of sucking the solder out and then here's what it looks like when I actually break the VGA port in half and you can see the pins are all there and much easier to get at and so what happens is you just grab one with the wire, uh, sorry, with the needle nose pliers and heat it up on the other side and they'll just pop right out. And once you do that for each one of them, you're going to come up with a nice clean looking port like that. If it looks like that, you should have no problems, should be fine. And you want to be really careful when you're removing the VGA because that's how we're going to be wiring or that's how this video series is going to be wiring the Xbox to the circuitry. So. Again, be gentle with this. Always make sure your workspace is clean and just I can't overstate that you need to be be careful about what you're doing. Here I'm going to start removing the DVI port. Um, I recorded this entire process here so that you can take a look at it uh, as I kind of skipped through the VGA port. But you can see I'm clipping the wires in the back so that I can more easily access them and it'll be easier to pull the white uh, plastic part off. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and fast forward through this a little bit. Uh, just keep in mind you need to be careful and I will slow it down to the end so you can watch the, what I was describing about pulling the pins out.
So you can see I've kind of gone to town on the DVI plug here. Uh, you can see some of the pins sticking out, you know, coming out of the way. You can see the DVI plug starting to uh, separate from the circuit board itself. And what you're going to see next, I uh, slowed it down to show you taking a pair of needle nose. And if you've uh, worked out enough solder from the two big ground holes on either side, you can kind of just gently roll it back and peel it off like that. And this will leave you with... Uh, just a little piece of white plastic that you can go ahead and pull off and then just all the pins which are much easier to take out uh, one by one. So as I'm preparing to pull the pins out one by one uh, just go through on the back add a little bit of solder to each joint to make sure that the solder is flowing really easy. Uh, fresh solder will do that to joints so that'll just make your life easier and you should definitely recommend doing it. Once you've got that ready to go, just like I was describing earlier, you can go ahead and hold onto the long side of the pin with the needle nose pliers. Make sure you're heating up the right joint in the back and each of them should slide right out individually. You can see I'm just pulling them out, setting them off to the side on the table, uh, just throw them away later. But this is a nice and easy, nice and clean way to uh, make sure that you don't hurt anything on your way there. Uh, the only thing you have to be really careful about is, like I said, uh, cracking the DVI port open uh, on the way to exposing the pins. That's where you're going to run the risk of doing some damage if you aren't careful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull these last few pins out here. Uh, once you get to this point, you should have a nice, clean circuit board. Uh, no burn marks or anything. You know, be careful not to scratch it. Uh, you don't want to ruin any of the leads or traces on there. And it should look something like this. Uh, it's important that it looks nice and clean because you're going to end up using the VGA again. The DVI is done. Um, but congratulations, you just completed your first and probably biggest step towards uh, slimming down the circuit board. So that's going to finish up this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, flattening out those capacitors, which are obviously the next biggest step towards making this thing as thin as possible. Catch you later.